I think one of the biggest impediments to ALS is the cost of developing some of the therapies, and, and it really it relates to the time it takes and also um, uh, the amount of money. And so anything that will shorten the duration of a trial uh, will help a company understand whether or not they should go ahead and continue the development of that drug. So sometimes there's an expression of kill early and kill often. Yeah. What we don't want to do is to have a compound that's not effective and waste years studying it only to find out um, in a phase three trial that it doesn't work. We'd much rather um, take a number of interesting compounds, take them through early clinical development, find out if they have uh, the possibility of working in ALS patients, and then allowing them to take only the most promising compounds into a phase three trial. So really the, the advantage of, of this biomarker is to be able to study a number of different drugs very quickly and then to decide which ones we take on for full development. I think we have a generation of neuroscientists that are eager to study any number of diseases. And uh, these are very bright people who would like to spend their career trying to find a cure for um, uh, whether it be Parkinson's or Huntington's disease, uh, Alzheimer's or ALS. And I think what private donations allow is to get young people interested in their disease to allow them to focus on ALS, to get them to be able to get their first grant. And it doesn't have to be an NIH, but what it may allow them to do is to get enough preliminary data that they can um, write uh, that critical NIH grant that will allow them to continue their research. So what it does is it acts as a, um, um, really an incubator for people to be able to focus research in ALS, allows them to get grants, or it potentially may allow someone to work in an area that's very risky that the NIH may not want to fund, but that risky area could be the next cure for ALS. And I think what we do is we open up the avenues of research, we open up the possibilities for funding for a lot of different people, allow people to go from one field to another, uh, and it really is um, just an added opportunity to get a lot more data uh, that may potentially find a cure for ALS. Uh, I think we're at a very um, interesting crossroad for ALS research. In the last several years, there's been um, a lot of information about potential pathways that are involved in ALS. And it turns out that these pathways, not only are they involved in ALS, uh, but they're also important for other neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's diseases. Uh, so if we can find out some of the really important information and potentially alter the course of ALS, which is a horrible, horribly progressive, um, uh, deadly disease, we may be able to impact not only ALS, but might learn some very valuable information about other degenerative diseases like Alzheimer's disease, which is a scourge on the aging population that's present in the United States. And also, I think right now, uh, we have all of this promising information and research that's coming out and it's at the worst possible time with the NIH when when government is trying to reduce their spending um, we're, we're we have all of this interesting information we'd love to do more and more experiments but we're limited by the amount of money that's available so having money come in at this particular time is absolutely critical to keep the pace of innovation going and not to slow us down for another five or ten years until the federal government decides to um, you know have more money available for research. Well, I think the model of the prize is a very interesting model uh, because what it allows is other people outside of the usual field or the cast of characters that are involved, for instance, in ALS research, uh, to suddenly get innovated uh, to really uh, look at their research in ALS. So I think the advantage is to, to use this prize to lure people to focus their efforts on ALS research. And this is different than the usual pathway that we use, let's say, from, from standard funding from the NIH. And I think it's a way of getting very smart people that don't normally think about ALS to get involved in ALS and 
broaden you know the experience and the background of some of the researchers because uh, that's a way to really make a breakthrough to bring in someone from another field um, that can bring all of that knowledge from their basic research in another field bring it and apply it to ALS and that is a, probably the best way I can think of is to make a breakthrough.